Welcome everybody, my name is Jack and today I want to present a very exciting paper in which the researchers investigated the role of the gut microbiome in modulating and affecting the progression of one of the most devastating diseases uh, called ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Just a quick background on what is ALS. Um, ALS is a selective uh, degeneration of motor neurons which are involved in regulating uh, skeletal muscle in the body. Um, those motor neurons project all the way from the top of the brain down all the way into the spinal cord. Subsequently, from the spinal cord, they then make their way onto the skeletal muscles which are involved in movement, breathing, and um, swallowing. When these motor neurons deteriorate and die, the individual loses its ability to control these uh, muscles and subsequently when they are not able to control their breathing or swallowing, they succumb to the disease. This is a really rapidly progressing disease as uh, the individual dies within three to five years after initial symptom onset. Uh, currently, there are only two FDA-approved drugs which have a minimal effect on the overall survival of these um, individuals. So a lot of research is still needed to help uh, figure out what is the driving mechanism behind this disease and to find therapeutic targets to help either slow down or cure the disease. In fact, uh, Stephen Hawking, which was, who was known for his brilliance in physics, succumbed to this uh, disease uh, not too long ago. So the question that the uh, researcher in this uh, paper are asking is whether the gut microbiome um, affects the, um, the progression or the, the disease uh, in, in ALS. Uh, what is the gut microbiome and why, did these in, why were these investigators interested in studying this? Uh, really briefly, the gut microbiome consists of all of the uh, bacteria, yeast, viruses uh, that are found within our gastrointestinal tract. Although I mentioned all of these different kinds of microbes, the researchers in this paper specifically uh, focused on the bacterial content and the diversity of the bacterial species that are found within the um, uh, gastrointestinal tract. So as depicted here in, in the cartoon form, uh, the different colors represented um, here represent the different types of uh, bacteria that would be found in the uh, gastrointestinal tract. The question is, do individuals and uh, animal models of ALS have different content and different uh, diversity of these uh, bacteria? Now why would the, the investigators care to look into this? The reason for that is that the gut microbiome has been implicated in multiple different kinds of disease states, uh, including Alzheimer's disease, autism, stress, addiction, uh, obesity, uh, diabetes, the list goes on and on. So in these uh, uh, studies, investigators have been able to demonstrate that when there is a change in the diversity or the content of the microbiome within these individuals, it could lead to uh, people developing these various sorts of diseases. So the question is, does the gut have any impact on the progression or uh, survival of ALS. To figure out whether the gut microbiome has any influence on the progression or survival of ALS, the, inf the investigators first used a genetically modified mouse model to conduct their studies. This mouse model, called SOD1-TG, is made by introducing a mutated form of the protein into these animals via genetic modifications. The SOD1 protein has long been established to be one of the proteins that causes the human form of ALS. Therefore, when the mutated form of this protein is introduced into these animals, these 
mice begin to develop symptoms very much similar to the human disease. Initially, they start to lose weakness. They, they start to lose uh, strength in their muscles and over a period of time become weaker and weaker. And eventually, when the respiratory muscles involved in breeding become uh, completely emaciated, the animal succumbs to death. Using this mouse model, the investigators first asked whether removing the gut microbiome will have any impact on the progression of the disease in these genetically modified animals. To ask to do this experiment, the investigators first injected a group of these animals with antibiotics. Antibiotics will cause the bacteria within their gastrointestinal tract to be completely wiped out. So when they uh, injected antibiotics in a group of them while giving them while giving another half just water, which is essentially the control, one would expect that the antibiotics will clear out all the gut microbiome within those receiving the antibiotics, whereas those receiving water will continue to have the bacterial content that's native to these animals. After the injection of the antibiotics, the investigators then compared to see whether the disease progress differently within these two groups. And to their surprise, this is exactly what they saw. Here in this graph, it's depicted the, uh, the grip score, which is essentially a way, a way to measure the muscle strength within these animals. So if we compare the red line with the blue, what we see is that the blue, which is the animals getting just water, have a much slower progression of the uh, loss of their grip strength compared to the animals which received antibiotics. This suggests that when the gut microbiome is completely removed from the animals, the animals become or progress much, much quicker. The end result of these experiments suggests that the gut bacteria have some kind of a protective effect which is slowing the disease down. In the next set of experiments, which complemented the first results, the investigators took these transgenic, genetically modified ALS models, and they grew them under two different conditions. Under germ-free condition, these animals are made so that from the second that they're born, they don't have any bacteria within their gastrointestinal tract, whereas their control counterparts contain the normal gut flora or the microbiome that is found within these animals. So from the very beginning, these animals do not have any kind of bacterial content. They then compared the survival between these two animals. And what the investigators found was that animals which were born without any kind of bacteria died much, much, much quicker and faster compared to the animals which had bacteria within their gastrointestinal tract. This once again reiterated the point that the bacterial content within the gastrointestinal system is having some kind of a protective role and is slowing down the disease. set of experiments, the investigators then compared the bacterial content and the diversity of these bacteria between normal, healthy and wild type animals, in other words, these animals do not carry the mutation that causes ALS, and compared those with the animals who developed the ALS. They then took the gut bacteria and they sequenced it to see if there are any changes in terms of the profile and the abundance of these bacteria. So what they found was in fact here you can see that if you look at the healthy wild type animals they have different 
proportion of these various kinds of bacteria compared to the animals which have uh, the disease-causing protein. In other words, less animals have a different microbiome profile compared to the healthy wild-type mice. In fact, when they did the similar studies in humans, what they found was that human patients indeed have a uh, different content of bacteria compared to uh, healthy controls, as can be seen here in this graph, where the pink are the ALS patients that group together and they group differently compared to the wild healthy humans, suggesting that the proportion and the content and the type of bacteria is different within these two groups. Furthermore, the investigators were able to isolate 11 different kinds of bacteria from these uh, transgenic animals. In their next set of experiments, what they did was they took these transgenic animals which harbored the mutation and gave them antibiotics to clear out all their gut uh, microbiome. They then introduced each of these specific species of bacteria one by one into the animals. And what they noticed was that uh, majority of the bacteria that they reintroduced had a negative impact on survival except one. This one called AM had a protective role on the animals. So here on the right side we could see the survival of these animals which received the bacteria specific species called AM. They lived much longer compared to the other groups of animals which received the other types of bacteria or just received saline, in other words, a uh, control injection. This suggested that this specific type of bacterial species within the animal is having a protective role and when administered at higher levels, it increases the survival and slows down the progression. Now, the question was, are these bacteria secreting some type of a molecule which is having the positive influence and causing the animal to die much slower. And using a very fancy bioinformatics and proteomics approach, they were able to identify a specific molecule called nicotinamide, which these bacteria uh, secreted. So the next step of the experiments involved injecting directly this nicotinamide uh, molecule into these ALS animals and comparing it to the control animals who just received water. And interestingly, when they measured the nicotinamide levels within um, ALS patients and compared them to healthy controls, what they found was that the ALS patients had much lower levels of this molecule circulating uh, in their bloodstream. Now this is interesting because the ALS patients also have lower levels of the bacteria which secretes this nicotinamide. So it makes sense that within their bloodstream, the level of the nicotinamide that is secreted by this bacteria will also be lower. So what happened to these animals that received nicotinamide uh, for a long period of time, what happened was that these animals here, which could be seen in this dark uh, green uh, curve, they progressed much, much slower compared to the animals who just received the water treatment. Moreover, if we looked at their neurological score, which is a way to calculate the overall uh, weakness and the, the muscle strength within each animal, what we see is that those animals which received the nicotinamide had a much better uh, neurological score compared to those which received the water alone. Now this suggested that the bacteria within the gastrointestinal tract of these animals 
secretes a specific metabolite called nicotinamide, which has a protective role on the motor neurons that are dying. So overall, what is the summary of, in, of the results of this paper? Well, what these investigators were able to demonstrate is that in Lou Gehrig's disease, the, if one were to look at the gut microbiome, um, you would see that there are significant differences in terms of the content and types of bacteria that are found either in the animal models of ALS or in human cases. Moreover, what they were able to demonstrate is that these bacteria are able to influence the survival and the overall lifespan of the motor neurons that are involved in this disease process. Interestingly, they were able to identify a specific molecule secreted by these gut bacteria which have a protective role on the motor neurons. Overall, this suggests that the interaction between the gut and the nervous system is very profound in ALS, which opens up doors to new therapeutic approaches and to newer understanding of the disease mechanism. After all, the intestinal uh, microbiome can be somewhat easily altered and if it's the case in humans that the microbiome has such a profound impact on the survival of these uh, patients then in the foreseeable future similar transplantation studies where bacteria from healthy donors could be used to replenish the gut microbiome of ALS patients and therefore possibly cause the slowing or the overall increased survival of these uh, patients. Now, what are the sort of um, weaknesses of the paper? The weaknesses is that we still need to take the next step in demonstrating these to be as effective in the cases of humans. So far, a uh, majority of the study has been done in a mouse model, although in human, very briefly, they were able to demonstrate similar changes in the gut microbiome and the nicotinamide levels. They have not yet demonstrated that when you transplant these bacteria into humans, that the human patients have a much slower progression of the disease. Overall, the exciting results from this paper is that the gut-brain interaction is very much important and it's an exciting um, field of research that needs uh, much more to be done. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this paper as much as I have and can see the wider impact of this exciting research. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below and I'll be happy to answer. And once again, thank you for your time and appreciate you listening to this presentation.